All right, so here we are in the last section, which is section five, which to be honest with you, this is a humongous section, okay? It really is because what we're talking about are systems of measurement. So <clears throat> well, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna learn, oops, forgot the word learn. We will learn how to convert what we call systems of measurements. Okay, so like for example here, um, if if you were to tell me uh, how tall you are, we use the measurement of feet to tell us how tall we are. Some people are five foot five inches, other people are six foot four inches, and so forth. Okay, if you were in Europe, you wouldn't use feet; you would use meters. So there are two completely different ways that we measure things. We also measure things differently based off the distance that they are. For example, uh, if you were to tell me how far away you live from the city of Pittsburgh, you wouldn't use feet. You would use miles. You would say, I'm about 10 miles away from the city or I live in the city, so I'm zero miles away. Okay. So to help us with this whole idea of measurements, we have... Um, basically a big system of measurements that we're going to use and i'm going to go ahead and show you what they are and this will this will be uploaded in the blackboard so make sure you print this up when you're looking at this okay so right here is going to be our system of units okay so i'm going to zoom in here so we can see this so for example here if we look in the very upper left hand corner we have length so one foot equals 12 inches one yard equals three feet. One mile equals 5,280 feet. Now, we call these numbers conversion factors or just conversions in general, okay? And this, these relationships allow us to convert from one unit to the other unit. But we're just not limited in length. We can also do volume. So volume, you can see there are three teaspoons and one tablespoon. There are 16 tablespoons in one cup. One cup is equal to eight fluid ounces and so forth. We could also look at weight. One pound equals 16 ounces. One ton equals 2,000 pounds. And then lastly, we can even, we have conversions for time. One minute is 60 seconds. One hour is 60 minutes. One day is 24 hours and so forth. Okay, so... These are the units that we use in what we call the British Imperial System, which is very fancy for uh, the only people in the world that use this are people that live in England uh, and then uh, people that live in the United States. Everybody else in the entire world uses the metric system. We are the only ones that use the U.S. system of units, hence that's why the title is the U.S. system of units. The metric system, I do have it here. It's down here. So here's our metric system. And then I also have conversions to go between the United States or the U.S. system and the metric system. And then finally, we're going to learn how to do temperature conversions as well using these two formulas. So if you're, you, you should be sitting there asking yourself, okay, well, how do we do this? Okay, And it's a technique that we, that we use called dimensional analysis. And the whole key to converting, the whole key to converting is to number one, find the conversion equation that you need. Okay. Now, if you're wondering what the conversion equation is, Okay, that, that's going to be all of these things right here that we just went over. These are all of the conversions, okay? And then step two is use n over n equals one property to set up the conversion. Now, this is a lot easier said than done. Sometimes with step one, this conversion equation, you may not have one. 
you may need to use two or three equations to get to what you want. And we'll go over them. I'll show you how they work, okay? But for now, what I want us to do is let's just go ahead. Let's do some examples here where, where we are just converting very simple numbers. We're going to stay in the United States for now. And then we're going to do a couple, couple examples of this. And then we're going to move into metric system. Then we'll move into converting between the two. And finally, we'll, like I said, we'll sum up with uh, temperature conversion. So please always be very disciplined with how you write your math. Being organized is going to pay off massively from now until you're done. But just most importantly here, and I always like to remind people, okay? So here's our first example. Molly is 66 inches tall. What is her height in feet? Okay, what is her height in feet? So this is how we do this. Step one. We're going to write down. The given unit or the given, well, let's say given measurement. Okay. So for us, it's going to be 66 inches. So that's step one. Step two. Find the appropriate conversion. Okay. Now, step two. I'm going to put a star next to it because this is the one where, you know, if you can find a conversion, great. If not, you may have to go through two or three conversions to get to where you want. So the easiest way to do this is to first look at the problem and say, okay, well, and I'm going to highlight here for us. They want us to start with inches and they want the answer in feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to, we're going to go to our, U.S. systems, and we're going to go to length because, you know, inches and feet are lengths. Height is a length. And we're going to try to find one conversion that goes from feet to inches. And if you look at the very first one right here, all right, it's not going to let me highlight it. I guess maybe I could. I can use my mouse to highlight it. Okay, whatever. There we go. So if we look right here, you have one foot equals 12 inches, okay? So we're going to go back, we're going to go back to, um, to our notes and I'm going to write this down one foot equals 12 inches. Okay. Step three is write the conversion. So here's what we do. From step one, we know our given measurement was 66 inches. So I'm going to draw a little box. Some people use parentheses. It doesn't matter. All right. And I know I want to go from feet. Uh, I'm sorry. I want to go from inches to feet, which means I need to reduce the inches here. So what I'm going to do is since the inches are in the numerator, and this box that I drew kind of looks like a fraction. I mean, if I just kind of erase those things right there and put parentheses, it looks like a fraction, right? So since it looks like a fraction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put inches down below and feet above. And that's my conversion. In other words, when I go to multiply this out, remember, n over n equals 1. 2 over 2 equals 1. A smiley face over a smiley face equals 1 according to mathematics. So inches over inches also equals 1. Okay? So when I go ahead and multiply this out, I'm going to be able to do this and cross out my inches because I know they reduce. All right? And here's the best part about this. 
since you already wrote your conversion in step two, you know exactly where the numbers go. If you read the conversion, it says one foot equals 12 inches. So when I come down to my conversion, I'm going to put one foot and 12 inches. Okay. Now the easiest thing to do here is to just multiply the entire top, multiply the entire bottom, and then divide. So 66 times 1 is going to be 66. There's nothing that multiplies the 12, so we just write 12, okay? And here's the beautiful part. We know because of n over n equals 1, and all this stuff underneath that I wrote, like 2 over 2 equals 1 and so forth, I'm going to erase it. I know the inches are going to cancel themselves out. They reduce. Notice there's nothing that reduces the feet. So whatever this turns out to be when I take out my calculator, because I'm going to use a calculator here. I'm not going to divide this by, you know, my head. My answer will be in feet. So let's get out our calculator. 66 divided by 12 equals 5.5 feet. And that is how we convert between units. Every single problem that we're going to be doing is done the same exact way. You want to write down the given measurement, find your conversion, and then just write it out as a series of multiplications. Remember, units matter. So where, where you put them matters tremendously. All right? So let's try another one. Same conversion here. Arthur is 28 inches tall. That's my dog, by the way. What is his height in feet? Okay. So remember, you start off with what's given. And we're going to write this multiplication. We know we're going to have to multiply this by something. Step two, let's find that conversion. Well, the conversion that we used previously, one foot equals 12 inches is going to apply here. So I know since the inches are in the numerator of the very first number, it has to go in the denominator in my second one. So inches in the bottom, feet up top. Now, if you look at your conversion, if you can read it, you can write it. One foot, one foot equals 12 inches. And now all we're going to do is just multiply. 28 times 1 is 28. 1 times 12 is 12. We know the inches will reduce because I have 1 in the numerator and 1 in the denominator. Get out my calculator. 28 divided by 12 equals 2.3 feet. And that's how tall my dog is. Okay. Now we're going to same we're gonna, it's the same process. We're just going to do we're going to use different conversions now. So the city of Pittsburgh is approximately 15 miles from Monroeville. What is this distance in feet? And we're going to round to the nearest foot. Okay? So process is still the same. Let's write down what's given first. So step one, we're going to write 15 miles. Now we know we're going to have to multiply this by something. Okay. And that something 
is going to be our conversion. We need to find a conversion that goes from feet into miles, if appropriate. So let's go ahead, let's look at our conversion sheet. So here's our conversion sheet here. And if you look at length and you look at miles, right here we have one mile equals 5,280 feet. So we do have a conversion that takes us directly from miles into feet. So let's go ahead, let's write that down. So I'm gonna write it underneath here. One mile equals 5,280 feet. Now, if we if we go back above and we look at our conversion, remember there's like a, there's like an imaginary one underneath here. Miles is in the numerator, which means miles will have to go in my denominator here. What goes up top will be feet. So if you can read your conversion, you can write it out. One mile, so one mile, 5,280 feet. Okay? So in this situation, we're going to take 15 times 5,280 and then divide it by 1, which we really don't have to divide by 1. The most important thing, miles in the numerator, miles in my denominator will reduce, leaving our answer in feet. So I can already write feet over here. I just need to take 15 times 5,280. So let's see what that is. 15 times 5,280 equals 79,200 feet. 79,200 feet. And that's approximately how far away Monroeville is to Pittsburgh if you're measuring in feet. Okay? So the next example here, we're going to go with weight. We're going to do one example with weight. So a cruise ship, I've been on a cruise before. I didn't like it at all. A cruise ship weighs 51,000 tons. Convert this weight to pounds. Okay? Well, even though this is no longer this is no longer length because we're talking about weight now, okay? But the beautiful part, the conversion process is the exact same. We're going to write 51,000 tons. And we're going to kind of just draw our little box right here. And then we go back to our conversions. Because we what, what we want to look for is tons and pounds. Like We want to see if there's a relationship that exists. Okay? So we come over here to weight. And right here, come on, let me highlight. Oh, it's not letting me highlight. Why not? Anyways, right here at the very bottom lower left hand of your screen, you can see one ton equals 2,000 pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down in our notes. So one ton equals 2,000 pounds. All right. And if I can read it, I can write it because I know I want to reduce the tons. So the tons has to go in my denominator. Pounds goes up top. And we know there in one ton, there are 2,000 pounds. So if I were to carry out this multiplication... I know the tons will reduce. My answer is going to be left in pounds. All I have to do is take 51,000 times 200. Or 2,000, I'm sorry. 51,000 times 2,000 equals 102 million pounds. So before I move on, I just want us to kind of recap a little bit of what we just did, okay? So, even though we had 
and I'm going to compare these two problems or these three problems right here. So even though we had three different problems, they were all done the same exact way, which is writing down what you're given, finding the appropriate conversion, and then multiplying from left to right and crossing out the units as we go. That's how we convert things. Now, some of us in this in the class, you may be going into some sort of science background like uh, nursing or engineering or chemistry, physics, whatever. You, the first thing you're going to be doing you, that you're going to learn how to do is convert. So if we can learn this now. When you approach your physics class or your chemistry class or your biology class, you will already have a massive advantage over everybody else because you've learned how to convert properly. And this is the way that we do it. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's do, um, let's do a conversion with, with gallon or, or I'm sorry, with, with volume here. So here's an example. How many cups are in one gallon of milk? Okay. So process is still the same. We're converting from gallons to cups. We write down what's given. One gallon. Now, I need to go ahead and see if there's a conversion that takes us directly from gallons to cups. So let's go ahead. Let's see what we got here, okay? All right, so this is a volume. And we have three teaspoons, the one tablespoon. Well, that's that, that, that doesn't help us. Two tablespoons, the one cup. Well, there's cup, but we, we weren't asked tablespoons. One cup equals eight fluid ounces. One pint equals two cups, one quart equals two pints, and one gallon equals four quarts. So notice here, there is no magical conversion that takes us directly from gallons directly into cups. However, if you think about this, we do kind of have some things going on here. All right. Now, hopefully... It'll let me highlight again. I don't know. We're going to try this out. We're going to use a different color. All right. So here we go. We got one gallon is four quarts. We know that. Okay. And we know one quart is equal to two pints. And we also know that two pint or that one pint is equal to two cups. So it looks like what we're going to have to do is go from gallons to quarts first. So this is going to be one. Then we're going to take that answer and go from quarts, because that's what our answer will be in, in the pints. This will be two. And finally, we can go from pints to cups. And this will be our third conversion. All right? So what I'm going to do for us is I'm going to write all this down. All right? So let's go back into our notes here. And we have gallons to cups written here at the top. We can't do that. But that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to erase this. And we're going to go from gallon to quartz. And then quartz to pints. And then finally pints to cups. All right? So if you think about this, all right, we're starting with gallons. We have quarts, pints to cups. Notice this is our first conversion, second conversion, third conversion, which means, do you see this first box? Well, this first box is going to take us from gallons to quarts. I need another box, and this box will take us from quarts to pints, and then finally the last box will take us from pints to cups. Now notice, I haven't used any numbers yet. All I'm worried about are the units because when I multiply from left to right, I need to make sure my units reduce. Remember, it all goes back to this fundamental property 
all the way back in chapter 4. n over n equals 1. So, if you look, and I'm going to highlight it for us so we can, so we can see, because this is a very intense problem. Notice we have gallons in the numerator, gallons in the denominator. That reduces the 1. We have quarts in the numerator, quarts in the denominator. That's going to reduce. We have pints in the numerator, pints in the denominator. That reduces. Our final answer will be in cups because nothing reduces the cups. The only thing that we have to do right now is write out these conversions. So let me write out the conversions for us. I'll write them underneath. One gallon equals four quarts. One quart equals two pints. And finally, one pint equals two cups. Now, you've heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it again. If you can read it, you can write it. And what I mean by that is let's look at this very first conversion. It goes from gallons to quarts. One gallon equals four quarts. So one gallon and four quarts goes into the first box. Now, I know if I were to multiply, this conversion's done. So I can scratch it out. My second conversion it's going to go from quarts to pints. If you can read it, you can write it. One quart, two pints. So now that conversion's done. My third and final conversion, one pint to two cups. One pint to two cups. So now I can scratch that out. I know when I multiply all these numbers together, my answer units will be in cups. It's just a matter of multiplying from left to right. Notice in my denominator... Every single number is a 1. So I don't even have to worry about multiplying that. I just got to do the numerator. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And 8 times 2 is 16. So when asked how many cups are on 1 gallon of milk, we say 16 cups. Okay? Honestly, that, I thought, difficult problem. And it's because... We needed three conversions, okay? Now, sometimes you can make up, you can create your own conversions. Because if you think about it, what we just learned, and maybe we can add this to our list, one gallon is equal to 16 cups. That's a beautiful thing. So now you, got, you can add another conversion to your list in case you run across this problem again, okay? Now, sometimes, and this always happens to me when I'm up at the grocery store, and it drives me crazy, but it is what it is. Sometimes you have different units going on. And what I mean by that is this, okay? We'll use myself as the example. John bought, and I, I love, I love this, this dish right here. I bought tuna steaks. For dinner. Their weight. Or their weights combined. Because I bought multiple. Okay. Actually how many did I buy? Let's say three. John bought three tuna steaks for dinner. I do like tuna steaks. Their weights were. Alright. And here's. I'll write them down here. So. We'll call it. We'll call it tuna one. 14 ounces, tuna two, one pound, two ounces, and then tuna steak number three, one pound, six ounces. The question is, <clears throat> how many total pounds of tuna steak
did John buy? Okay. Now notice within these tuna steaks, there are two separate units. We have pounds and we have ounces. All right. Also, they're asking me or they're asking us for the total pounds. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's just add all these numbers together. So tuna one plus tuna two plus tuna three. will equal my total weight. I'm just going to write that over here. And then to the right-hand side, I'm going to get everything nice and nice and neat. Tuna 1 was 14 ounces. Tuna 2 was 1 pound, 2 ounces. Tuna 3 is 1 pound, 6 ounces. So when I add all these up, 14 plus 2 plus 6 is going to be 22 ounces. And then 1 plus 1 is 2 pounds. Okay? But here's the issue. If we go back into our... <coughs> excuse me. If we go back to our conversions here... So let me go back to our conversions. Notice in the lower left-hand corner of your screen where it says weight... One pound equals 16 ounces. So I'm going to write that down. You can't see me writing it, but I'm going to write it down real quick. Because now we're going to go back into our notes. See, here's the issue. Notice I have 22 ounces total, but we know 16 ounces is one pound. So there's a couple of ways we can go about this. I think the easiest way would just be to say, okay, well, if I have 22 ounces... And I subtract 16 away from that. 22 minus 16 is going to be 6 ounces. In other words, I already know since I already have 1 pound, or, or I'm sorry, since I already have 22 ounces, that's going to be 1 more additional pound with 6 ounces left over. So 22 ounces is 1 pound Six ounces. So all I'm going to do is take this additional pound and just move it over to here and just say John bought three pounds, six ounces of tuna steak. And if you've never had tuna steak before, trust me, it's really good. It's really good. Normally, if you go to, um, if you just go to get like sushi, and you just get like regular tuna sushi. That is tuna steak inside the, inside the sushi roll. Um, I, it's disgusting. I could probably eat like eight of those rolls in one sitting. It's bad. <laughs> but I really like it. And for me, it's like a treat because I don't always get it. So when I get it, I'm very excited. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our attention to the metric system. Okay? So let me show you what the metric system looks like first. So here's our metric system. And notice here we have basically three major units. We have length, mass, volume, or capacity. Just like in the U.S. system, U.S. system we had length, we had, we had weight, we call it weight, and then we have volume. Same thing here. But the key, the key to the metric system is, is everything is kind of based off of the number one. So if you look right down the middle here in each of these, Notice the length, we call it a meter. The mass, we call it a gram. And the volume, we call it a liter. And in order for us to kind of measure, we either multiply or divide by 10. So if you look, if I take 1 times 10, notice I get what we call a decameter. If I take 1 times 100, I get a hectometer, and if I take one times a thousand, I get 1,000 meters. In other words, oh, I didn't want to do that. I just want to erase. Can I just erase? Will you let me erase? There we go. So in other words, and here's the key to the metric system, and this is why, uh, to be honest with you, the metric system is super easy, and everybody in the world uses it except us. 
all we have are these prefixes. Notice I'm highlighting deca, hecto, and kilo. Deca means 10. Hecto means 100. Kilo means 1,000. So if you tell me you have a kilometer or, 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 or uh, yeah, a kilometer, I know you're talking about 1,000 meters because kilo means 1,000. So you got 1,000 of them. Now, if we go the opposite direction, if I start at a meter and I want to go this way, what I'm doing is dividing by 10. So 1 divided by 10 or 1 tenth is 0.1, 1 one hundredth is 0 0.01, and then 1 one thousandth is 0 0.001. And notice the prefixes, deci, centi, and mili. Now, every single one of these always has the word meter on the end. Every single one. It's the prefixes mean everything. So in the, in the metric system, we start with the standard, and the standard is right down the middle here in all three columns. For length, it's a meter. For mass, it's a gram. And for volume, it's a liter. The only thing that changes are going to be the prefixes. If you say one centimeter, that's one one hundredth of a meter or 0 0.01 meters. If you say centigram, it's 0 0.01 grams. If you would say centiliter, it is 0 0.01 liters. See, that's what makes the metric system so easy. You were either multiplying or dividing by 10. Okay, that's it. Now, down below, they do give us some very common measurements. So I'm going to highlight them for us as well. So here, here are the common ones. One meter equals 100 centimeters. One meter equals 1,000 millimeters. So these are the common ones. All right. So we always kind of see these, you know, when we're talking or measuring stuff and everything like that. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's do some conversions using the metric system. Okay, so, all right, I'm back. So here's our first example. Uh, every year, John runs in a 5K race. The 5K stands for Five kilometers. How many meters is this race? And to be honest with you, I do not run in a 5K race every year because I don't run. I have a car, and cars allow me to get to wherever I want to get to much faster. I do walk a lot, though. I always walk the dog every day, a couple miles a day. But I don't run. I don't like to run. I'm, I'm older now I have a car so the process of this is still the exact same as what we did earlier nothing changes number one you always write down what you're given five kilometers okay now we're gonna go over into our conversions and we're gonna see is there a conversion that takes us from kilometers directly into meters so if we go back over to our notes Notice right here, one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. So we definitely have a conversion. So let's write that down. One kilometer equals 1,000 meters. So I want the kilometers to cancel. I write it down below. I write meters up top. And I know if I can read the conversion, I can write it. One kilometer, 1,000 meters, five times 1,000 is going to be 5,000 meters. And that's how far the race is. So very straightforward problem. Nothing too crazy with it. All right. Let's try another one here.
Carrie's newborn baby weighed 28, we'll say 2,800 grams. How many kilograms is this? Okay, so they want us to go from grams to kilograms. And let's see if we can remember this. You ready? Remember, the prefix kilo means 1,000. So if we think about this, there should be 1,000 grams in one kilogram. Now, the only way to truly verify this conversion is to go back to our notes. So let's go back to our notes. And right here underneath mass, we can see one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. See, that's why the metric system is so easy. We already know what the conversion is if we know what the prefix is. Kilo means 1,000. So we can come back into our notes. Let's write down what we're given first. 2,800 grams. Now we need the grams to cancel out. So since the grams are in the numerator in the first fraction, grams will be in the denominator in the second. Kg, which is the abbreviation for kilograms, will go in the numerator. So if you can read your conversion, you can write it. 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram. So here, we multiply across the top. Our answer is going to be in kilograms because the grams reduce. So I get 2,800 times 1, which is going to be 2,800 divided by 1,000. And we know whenever you divide by 1,000, you are moving the decimal place three places to the left. So this is going to be 2.8 kilograms. Okay? So now let's take this one step further. Okay? We're going to do uh, a situation where we're, we're going to have to do like two conversions. Okay? Uh, we'll keep it. I'll just keep it really simple. How many centimeters are in three decameters? Okay, so how many? How many uh, centimeters are in three decameters? Okay. Now, if we come back over to our notes, notice this is a length. Right here is deca. And all the way down here is centi. Okay. So it looks like what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get back to our standard. So we're going to go from decameter to meters and then meters to centimeters, okay? So let's go ahead, let's write this out. We need to go from three decameters into meters and then into centimeters. So we write down what's given first. Now we know decameters needs to cancel, so I'll put it in the bottom. And we need to go from deca meters to regular meters. So meters goes up top. But now we're gonna need another conversion to go from meters to centimeters. I'm just gonna write CM for centimeters. That's the abbreviation. Now at the bottom, I'm gonna write out the conversions. 
one decameter is equal to 10 meters, okay? <clears throat> and then one centimeter is equal to 0 0.01 meters. Now, I took that directly from our chart right here, okay? Like that's where one decameter equals 10 meters, one centimeter equals 0 0.01 meters. The only reason why the meters in the middle is highlighted is because that is where we need to go to from deca so we can go into centi very easily. So if we can read it, we can write it. One decameter, 10 meters. So one decameter, 10 meters. Now one centimeter, 0 0.01 meters. All right. Now, when we multiply from left to right, the decameters will reduce. The meters will reduce. Notice nothing reduces the centimeters. So if I multiply across the top, I get 3 times 10 times 1, which is 30. If I multiply across the bottom, it's 1 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.01. So then I get out my trusty calculator. I take 30 divided by 0 0.01, hit enter, and I get 3,000. So there are 3,000 centimeters in three decameters. Okay? Now, here comes the fun part. What if we wanted to convert between... U.S. measurements and the metric system. Well, luckily for us, somebody went out <laughs> and already figured out uh, what these conversions will be. So let's go back over to our notes. And here are the conversion factors between U.S. and metric. So notice we have length, weight, and volume. And we have, these are the biggies. There's a lot more, but these are the biggies. So for example, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. One foot is equal to 0 0.305 meters and so forth. Weight. The most popular one is down here at the bottom. One kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. In volume, one liter equals 1.06 quarts. And then you have all your other conversions. So we're going to do a couple conversions going from U.S. to metric or from metric back to U.S. It, it really doesn't matter. So let's go ahead. Let's look at a couple of these examples. What you're going to find is that the process does not change at all. Okay. So here's our first example. Bill weighs 180 pounds. How much is this in kilograms? So you write what you were given first, 180 pounds. Now, we need a conversion that goes from pounds to kilograms. Luckily, luckily for us, that exists at the very bottom. In the weight category, one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. All right, one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. So we're going to write that down. One kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. Now I know when I set up my conversion, pounds goes in the denominator, kilograms is going to go in the numerator. So if you can read it, you can write it. One kilogram. 2.2 pounds. I know the pounds are going to reduce. My answer is going to be in kilograms. So the only thing I got to do is just take 180 times 1, which we know is 180, and divided by 2.2. So that's going to give me, let's get out our calculator. 180 divided by 2.2 2 equals 81.8181 repeating. So we're just going to call it 82 pounds. We'll round to the nearest pound. 
or I'm sorry, round to the nearest kilogram. So in the United States, Bill weighs 180 pounds. And as soon as he steps on European soil, let's say in Ireland, he will weigh 82 kilograms because they use the metric system as well. Okay, let's look at another example. I've actually made this trip, so we'll do this one. The flight distance from New York to London, well, let's be more specific, New York City to London is 5,586 kilometers. What is this distance in miles? All right, now I'll be honest with you. I have no idea how far 5,586 kilometers is because I'm not used to using that system of measurement. However, I can write down what I'm given. And let's see if we can find a distance that goes from kilometers into miles. So we go back to our conversion. And let's see here. Do we have one? Let's see. One inch to centimeters? No. Oh, here we go. The fourth one. Beautiful. One mile equals 1.61 kilometers. That's the one I'm going to use. So, oops, sorry. Here we go. One mile equals 1.61 kilometers. Now, I know in my conversion, kilometers has to go in my denominator because I want it to reduce. Miles goes up top. If I can read it, I can write it. One mile, 1.61 kilometers. So when I multiply the kilometers reduce, basically I need to take 5,586 divided by 1.61. Calculator time, 5586 divided by 1.61. equals 3,469.56. We'll round it to the nearest mile. So we'll, we'll call it 3,470. 3,470 miles. All right. So let's try to put this into perspective here. All right. Because once again, that's a lot of miles. I know it's a lot of miles. So let's see something here. I'm going to pull over uh, the Google machine real quick. How many miles from New York City to Los Angeles, which is on the opposite side of the United States? So <clears throat> the distance from New York to L.A. is 2,780 or 2,789 miles. Long way. It's a long trip, okay? If we look at what we have, so, oh, I forgot to show you this. <laughs> Doesn't help you. Here we go. So you should be able to see this now. So from New York to LA, 2,789 miles. The distance from New York to London, according to our math, which I know our math is really good, is 3,470 miles. So Basically, if you go like another 700 miles, you get you can go to uh, you would be in London, which if you think about that, the United States is huge. It is massive compared to Europe. It doesn't look like it on a map because maps, the way maps are drawn, it's they try to draw a three dimensional object in, 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 in two dimensions. So. The United States looks small when you look at Europe. Uh, but if you look at an actual real p 
picture, if you overlay them, um, the United States is just huge. Here, I got a here. Here's a picture right here. I'll show you. All right, because it's it. People are blown away by this. Here's the picture right here in the upper right hand corner of your screen. So in blue is the United States. That is how big the United States is compared to Europe. We basically, if you were to put us right on top of Europe, the United States would eat Ireland, the UK, Denmark, <laughs> some of Spain, France, Germany, Austria, Italy, Romania, Greece, the Ukraine, Belarus, Poland. I mean, the United States is huge. People don't realize how big the United States really is. It is massive. Okay? So I hope that kind of, you looked at that and you're like, oh my gosh, the United States is very big. <laughs> All right? So the last thing I want to go over here are just the two formulas when we're talking about converting temperature. All right. Once again, this is a U.S. versus the rest of the world type thing. So in the U.S., we use Fahrenheit, like 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The rest of the world uses Celsius. And these are just formulas. They're really easy to understand. All you got to do is just substitute in the numbers. And uh, crunch, crunch it down. Tell me what it is. So we'll do two examples of this. So we'll keep it easy. So here's our first example. In the U.S., let's see here. Today's temperature. So today is, a, is a November 16th. So if I look at my iPhone real quick. Give me a sec. I need to find the app. It's currently 40 degrees. Okay, so in the U.S., the current temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. What is this? In Celsius. So in order for us to do this, notice that we are given... Fahrenheit. So if we go to our formulas to convert Fahrenheit temperature to Celsius, we're going to use the very first formula right here. So we use this one right here. All right. So C is going to equal 5 over 9 times quantity F minus 32. So C equals 5 over 9 times the quantity F minus 32. So all we're going to do is substitute in our Fahrenheit temperature, which Currently at 12.42 p.m. on Tuesday, November 16th. It is 40 degrees. So we just take 40 minus 32 first, order of operations. 40 minus 32 is 8. And then we take 5 over 9 times 8. All right? So when you go ahead and you do that math, so notice nothing reduces. So C is going to equal... 5 times 8 is 40, divided by 9, and 40 divided by 9 is going to be 4.4 degrees Celsius. So right now, if you were in Europe and you took out your phone and you looked at the temperature, it would say 4.4, or be honest with you, it would just say 4 degrees Celsius. Okay? Now, another example. Since, <coughs> since we went from Fahrenheit to Celsius... We're going to go the exact opposite way now. All right. So let's say, for example, you lived in Ireland. And you were planning a trip to the U.S., The current temperature in Ireland is 32 degrees Celsius. What is this temp in Fahrenheit? Okay, 
So notice in this problem, they're giving us they're giving us degrees Celsius. What we need to do is figure out Fahrenheit. So to do this, we use the second formula right here. So to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, F equals nine over five times Celsius plus 32. So let's go back to our notes. F equals nine over five times degree Celsius plus 32. So F is gonna equal nine over five times 32 and then add 32. So degrees Fahrenheit equals, well, let's see here. We're gonna use our calculator. We'll just use the calculator for the whole problem. It'll be easy. Let me move it over here. So nine divided by five equals 1.8 times 32. And then we're gonna add 32 to that. So Fahrenheit temperature is 89.6 degrees. Woo. You better be packing some shorts, a t-shirt, some sunscreen, because it is hot. That's basically 90 degrees. Days like that, I stay inside. All right, so that's it for this lecture. Section five, like I said, was huge. This lecture video is already an hour long. Um, just remember, to sum up, when we're converting, step one, write the given measurement. Step two, find your conversion or conversions. Step three, write them out. And then step four, simplify. Okay. And that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I will see you in a while because we have a break coming up, which is awesome. So that'll be it. See you in chapter eight. Bye.